Today we're testing this remote to see if it needs a new battery and if it does, replacing the battery. The only thing I'm using today for tools is this multimeter and the screwdriver to pop it open. These Ford keys break here all the time so you definitely want to be careful here especially if your plastic looks brittle. So when this is apart you've got the front side with the buttons, the button slash gasket, and the chip which has the contacts for the battery. On the back side all you've got is the back plastic and the battery is retained in that plastic. Let's pop this battery out. All right, that doesn't seem too low. Let's test out the brand new battery. Hmm. Looks like we're gonna have to do a little more investigating to see what the problem is here. With this open like this, all you have to do is press in on one of the buttons or a few of the buttons and pop out that rubber gaskety button material. And now the chip is contained inside this and you can pop that out. There's some humidity in there, which isn't great for the circuit board. It's very common for sweat to get into this stuff. The buttons on this board aren't looking too good either. This is what those buttons look like after you clean them up a little bit. Don't forget to clean both sides of this rubber piece. This one wasn't actually that bad. I've seen some of these that look like they've been pulled out of a swamp recently. If you're being extra thorough, you'll clean this up too. That's what I'm gonna do. That's pretty clean. This case has some pretty straightforward directions molded right into it. Now I'm just gonna do a simple check for continuity through this board. It's gonna make that sound when there's continuity. These dots here are your buttons. You can tell which ones are which by lining it up with this button pad. So if you're looking to test to see if your unlock button works, you go over to this one. The button itself has four contact points. Whoever makes this button makes it so you can have more attachments to it, but they didn't use all those. They just soldered these down into place so it's held in four spots. So you'll wanna test across these two points. You can even follow these lines to see where they go to like this side goes into this chip here. So when you press your unlock button here, the positive circuit heads down here into your switch. The switch is normally open and when you press it, it closes, completes the circuit, and that goes into this chip here. So there's definitely a lot of stuff on this board to test, but the thing that probably receives the most wear and tear is this unlock button, the trunk button and lock button probably receive a lot, and this one's probably untouched for the most part, this horn alarm thing, but they do get used. So with all that being said, I just wanted to say, make sure when you're testing this, you don't put it on the wrong spot and get a false negative. All right, that one works. That one works. Test here and here to see if there's a pathway from the positive to the switch. Yep. All right, this seems good. It looks like it was unhappy about water getting in there and it was acting up. I cleaned this up a bit, some of it by hand, it's just scraping off the gunk with a screwdriver. And after I did that, I used some contact cleaner to clean the rest of the junk off. With everything clean, you can start to reassemble it. Make sure you have the buttons both top or both bottom when you put them together. You want to put the chip into the gasket first because there's a lip on here that makes it difficult to press the chip in all the way. You don't want to break that chip. The old battery seemed fine, but I've got a new battery. I'm just going to put that in there. Push it together, pressing on here, and it's back together. Now I just need to test this out on the car. Perfect. Now let's test out the trunk. Awesome. That works way better than it did. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.